Hey folks, and welcome to this video on how to connect ChatGPT to Google Sheets. I'm going to show you how to open an account with OpenAI, build a Google Sheet in order to collect the information that we want to pass to the ChatGPT, and join it all together with a little bit of Google Apps Script. If the thought of Google Apps Script scares you a little bit, don't panic. Just follow the steps in this video and you'll be surprised at how easy the whole thing is. All you need is a Google Sheet and an account with OpenAI. You won't need any prior experience with Google Apps Script. I'll walk you through the whole thing. You'll have your very own personal assistant AI within Google Sheets in under 15 minutes. So with that said, let's jump in. So this is the demo sheet that we just saw briefly a moment ago. You can see that we've got two columns here. We're going to create the request or the question in this column, in column A, and you can have as many as you wish in column A. And when we trigger this script up here to generate the response, the AI will generate a response in column B. And that's all done with a bit of Google Apps Script. So let's start from the beginning. We'll start with a basic sheet where it just returns one column of data. You can just ask one question or you can ask multiple questions. It's entirely up to you. And I'll show you how to do that a bit later on. In a follow-up video, I'm going to create a more dynamic solution that creates a custom formula that you can trigger within any cell within Google Sheets. The second one allows a bit more flexibility for joining multiple things up together. You can create tables just like this here, but we'll dive into that in another video. I won't go into the nitty gritty of what ChatGPT is or how it can be utilized in this video, but I do have a full post on my website at spreadsheetwise.com. So I'll post a link in the description box below. So go check that out. That's got everything you need to know in terms of what it does and how much it costs. And you can see here with the ChatGPT, you can come once you've got an account, you can come along here and just ask questions directly to the ChatGPT window here. The chat gives us the response. And that's basically what we're going to do. We're going to just generate something like this within the Google Sheet itself. So to get started, we're going to need to jump over to the OpenAI website to sign up and create an account. So let's head over there. So you'll need to enter your email address and create a password. Once you've done that, just click continue. Next, you'll need to verify your email address. So just check your inbox and then click the button to verify your email. After that, you'll need to enter your name and your phone number and you'll get a text message with a six digit code that you'll need to enter on this screen. And then you're pretty much done. You'll get $18 worth of free credits for the first three months, but this is limited to just one phone number. So if you create more than one account linked to the same phone number, any subsequent accounts won't be entitled to free credits. Once you're all done, you'll end up on the overview page within OpenAI. That looks a little bit like this. So it's worth having a look around and seeing what options are available to you. You know, the quick start tutorial, that type of thing. You've also got full documentation if you want to read up on all the different models that are available in here and just a general sort of overview of, of how it all works. You've got tutorials here as well. There's some examples of how you can use the chat GPT. You can also play with it in the playground here. You can ask questions in here and you can change the different models and the temperature. Um, and we'll talk about these in a moment. Um, once you submit a question in here, you can just su submit here and get the answer straight within this window. But the chat GPT window is, is probably easier to have a more fluid conversation with the chat GPT. You can ask pretty much anything, but remember that the training data only includes information up to about September 2021, and that's with the GPT 3.5 Turbo model. I'll pop a link down in the description box below for all the other models that are available. So just bear in mind, if you ask a question where the information is more recent, in other words, after September 2021, it won't be able to help you because it doesn't have access to real-time data. Okay, so now that we've got everything set up, let's jump in and connect ChatGPT to Google Sheets. So we're going to start with a blank spreadsheet here. Let's just call this chat GPT. We're going to need two tabs. The first one we're going to call AI and the second one we're going to call that settings. Now you can call these whatever you like, but obviously we do use this within the Google Apps Script, the references to these names. So that's just something to bear in mind. The AI sheet is where we're going to ask the questions and get the responses and the settings is where we're going to store all the parameters that we need within the Google Apps Script. So if we head over to the settings tab, we'll give this a title for parameter and value. So we're going to put in here model max tokens, temperature, and finally our API key. So as I mentioned earlier on, if we go over to the models, we can use any of these models here. And this is the training data that it's gone up to. So you can use 
any one of these, but you know, you, you're limited on how many tokens you can use and the costs obviously do depend on, on which one you're going to use. I mean, the costs are very, very minor, but it's just something to bear in mind. You should check the costs out there. I'm going to use this Da Vinci model here. So in the model here, I'm going to just paste that value in here. And of course you could create a drop down with all the different models that are available to make it easier to change that. You, know, you could just have a list of the models over here and, and just change it from, from a drop down here. I've got a, a video on, on the drop down chips in Google Sheets. I'll post a link in the card up above if you want to check that video out. For max tokens, as I say, you could go anywhere up to 4,000 in, in this particular model, but we're going to just restrict this to 300 for now, but you can do any value in there you want as long as it's not more than 4,000. The higher this number, the larger and more comprehensive the response will be. OpenAI models are non-deterministic. That means that identical inputs can yield different outputs. Setting the temperature to zero will make the outputs more deterministic, but a small amount of variability will remain. You can essentially set this anywhere between zero and one. So have a play around and see what works for you. I'm gonna set this to 0.5 for now. And then our API key will go in here. And so let's jump over to OpenAI and get the AI key. Now for you, the first time you do this, if you click on your personal link up the top here and go to view API keys, I've already created one here. You'll need to create a new one and then you'll need to copy that and you want to paste that directly into the sheet. Now I already have mine, so I'm gonna pop mine in here. It's important to note that you should not share this API key with anyone else or expose it anywhere on the web. The reason is that if anyone discovers your API key, they could basically use it to generate responses on your behalf within your account. So you could technically share the sheet with someone else you know, as long as you trust that person, but just don't share your sheet publicly with your API key exposed. Otherwise you might end up with a large bill. Okay, so we can jump back over to the AI tab now. And in here, we're going to put two titles. We're going to have the request and the response. Just drag this down to freeze that, that row there. That's quite a handy tip. And we'll just widen these out a little bit. Okay, so if you jump up to the menu here for extensions and then click on App Script, that will open up a new tab in the browser and you'll get this main function by default. You can just delete that. Now, I'm not gonna go over the, the details of the App Script in this video, but if you go to my website at spreadsheetwise.com, I'll put the link down in the description box below. You'll get the full script, which you can just copy and paste from, from my website and paste it straight into here. So I've just pasted that in here. Essentially, it has a few different functions. This, this first one here just quickly creates a menu option as you saw up here in the demo that I showed earlier on. This is a, it's not necessarily required, but I put it in here because I felt that it was quite useful to clear the sheet out and I'll show you what I mean once we get this started and, and up and running. And then the last OpenAI function down the bottom here is the main function. Um, and this has got lots of bits and pieces down here. So as I say, I won't go into the nitty gritty of it, but you can get that directly from my website. Now with this API key here, I'm getting this, this value directly from my sheet. So I'm looking in the settings tab within my sheet and getting it from a certain range within that sheet. Now, obviously, if you wanted to do that a different way, uh, in other words, if you want to store the, the API key directly in here, then instead of doing it like this, you could just delete this part and you could just put single quotes and then paste your API key directly into there like that. And that just means you're storing the API key within the script rather than in the sheet. So let's just save this script that we rename it here and we'll save it. You can see it's not saved right now. So we'll click this little save button up here. Now, the very first time you run the script, you'll need to verify permissions within the account. So before we do that, let's just pop a question. Let's take this question here and pop it in our sheet. So now that we're back onto the app script tab, we want to run this for the very first time. And when we do, we need to verify these permissions here. So we'll just click review permissions. That'll open up this second window here and you'll see your email address listed here. Now, if, you've, if you're logged into multiple accounts, you may see multiple email addresses. You'll just need to click on the one that you want to associate this script to. So that's my one there. 
And then this message just tells you that the script that we're creating essentially is just like a, an individual app, if you like. And that app needs to get access to your spreadsheet in order to, to do things within your spreadsheet on your behalf. So it needs to be able to see, edit, create, delete, um, and connect to an external service. In this case, this is the um, OpenAI service. So this is completely normal. You don't need to worry about this. As I say, once you create it in your account, that's an app within your account that you're giving permission to access your Google Sheet. So we'll just click allow down here. And you can see that's executed and that's completed okay. So let's jump back over to the sheet here and you can see now we've got this menu option available to us now. This is what you're going to click each time you want to run a query or a request to get a response. You'll click this generate button here. You won't need to go to this app script window. We can close this just now. It's not required anymore, but we'll leave it there for a moment. So if we click generate now, the script will run, connect to the open AI and give us a response. And there we go. So you could add another question down here. Now just bear in mind that obviously each time you run this script, it looks for all information within column A, anything where there's, there's values in column A. If it finds in this case, two values, it's found these two here, it will run the script again and it will regenerate this response and give us the second response down here as well. So if you don't clear this information out in this column here, it will just rerun it again. And there's nothing wrong with doing that, but just bear in mind that obviously each time you run the same question again, you, you can get a different response because it's deterministic, um, but you're also using tokens at the same time. So just something to bear in mind. So if we generate this again, this text here will change. It will give us a slightly different version of this and it will give us the response to the second question that we put in here as well. So you can see that's updated this one and it's given us the second one here. So as I say, you could fill hundreds or thousands of lines of questions in column A, click the open AI and generate and it will give you those responses in column B. Or you can just do one at a time, it's entirely up to you. And if you want to do one at a time, just come along and clear this content and that just clears, resets all of these cells down here so you're back to a blank canvas to ask the next question. So as I say, you can close the app script window. You don't need that anymore. All you'll need is your Google Sheet and just these two buttons here, and you've got your personal AI within Google Sheets. Make sure you look out for the next video where we're going to explore ChatGPT with a custom function in Google Sheets, and that just allows much more flexibility. Um, you can even customize the little formula helper window to your liking. And we'll explore other ways how you can utilize the custom function within Google Sheets to make things even more productive in whatever it is you're doing. So with that said, guys, I hope you found that video useful. If you did, make sure you give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. I'd really appreciate that. But for now, that's all for today, folks. Thanks for watching.